Righty. This is all about, or still part of the flavor pack, the upcoming one. So let's see. Hello and welcome. Da 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 da. Historical flavor. One way to significantly improve the state of the game in a given starter is to look into what unresolved issues were ongoing in a specific location at the time. Is it, is it to a large degree, that was the thinking behind the struggle system itself. But, and as already described in a previous diary, there is now both a new 867 bookmark start and a struggle called the Iranian Intermezzo to achieve this. I haven't actually looked at the struggles yet. I know there's an Iberian struggle and it has some stuff going on, but I haven't actually played anything where that is relevant at all. But the struggle alone cannot cover anything that was important for ruler in medieval Iran in 867 or 1066. We have therefore taken the opportunity to more thoroughly research the starting situation for both starts, adding new rulers, dynasties, rivalries, as well as less political. All right, very good. Additionally, there has been a general go-over of the cultural and religious setup of the entire region adjustments here and there aiming to better reflect the political realities of the time interesting interesting having some historical accuracy in our blob game <laughs> might might not be the worst thing let's see what else do they have to say the biggest changes are certain religious groups or sects that were important in the 9th century iran the mutazila the kuramites the Azarika, the rebellious egalitarian Kuramites, would be particularly suited for underdog playthroughs through none, uh, though none are landed at the start. Whereas the fanatic as how do you what? Am I reading this wrong? Let me try again. Let me try this one again. Uh, I'm I'm a little bit confused now. The rebellious egalitarian Kuramites would be a particular suited for underdog playthroughs. Though none are landed at the start. What? How would that work? Whereas the fanatic Azarika stand ready to unleash a terrifying wave of assassinations to avenge the battle of Narvan and the many slights they believe they have suffered since. Both these faiths have been given new tenants to portray their unique worldviews at game start in 867. There's also an ongoing Az Az Azarika rebellion which you can partake in if you want to attempt to form an Azarican Caliphate. Huh? How can you play if you are not landed? My, my mind, it is boggled. Or is this just because this is a religion and the religion itself has no holdings, like the papacy or something similar? Is that what it means? Or is it literally you play as an un completely unlanded, like a mercenary band, basically? Is that what it is? I'm not sure if I understand this correctly. <laughs> All right. Fedayin unlocks the master assassin court position. Likelihood of death or injury in battle plus 10%. No party loss for killing characters of a different faith through the murder schemes. Okay. Makes vengeful a virtue. Okay. Makes craven a sin. All right. Okay, so these are religions, clearly. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The rural rebellious Kuramites are present in pockets all over Iran, though their great rebellions of the mid-9th century have long since suppressed. Also featured in the screenshot is a new geographic special location of Mount Damavand one of the multiple new special buildings in the update. How is that a building? That is a mountain. You just said it is one. <laughs> Did they build that? Um, okay. Righteous Rebellion. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. So so this is, these are, these are religions. All right. Okay. Sure. The cultural map has la uh, should largely be familiar with some notable exceptions like 1066 and 867 uh, now having different setups in the region of Balochistan. I don't even know where that is. Okay. When it comes to cultures, we've added a number of new cultural traditions, some of which add new gameplay elements such as the Kanat building line, 
from the irrigation experts culture role tradition which replaces dryland dwellers or the new court scholar court position okay court scholar sounds interesting from the new beacon of learning tradition which can be sponsored to unlock new innovations oh new innovations i like researching i do like me that beacon of learning as a tradition children of a law clerk more likely to get the pensive trade less likely to be rowdy learning education and the scholar trade also give cultural fascination progress yes yes very good i like that kind of point the court scholar court position guardians of this culture are more likely to give better education trades to their wards are you listening to this my dear min maxa people out there <laughs> this one is for you now you can get the bloodline thingy in the in the dynasty and then you can get that as well and they're going to be having all the good inheritable traits and they're going to have all the good education traits amazing for the greater region covered by the update we now also have jirga for the afghan balosh and baruhi cultures which among other things unlock the tribal elective succession from as well what from as well as new regional traditions that unlock unique men at arms types such as the zupin pragmatic creed spearmen or the tarkans frontier warriors all right we're also adding historically inspired decisions and events to the region i like that regional flavors i think are important to keep crusader kings 3 a little bit fresher um so you have more interesting playthroughs depending on where you go i really enjoy that that, that is something i appreciate this also means that some previously unlikely historical scenarios are now encouraged. For instance, Turkish conquerors in general and the Seljuks in particular are more likely to show up and make a new home for themselves in the Iranian plateau. And a rising ruler in Iran, you have new ways of promoting alternative, alternate Islamic faith in the region that are not present at the game start, such as the Maturidi denomination, of the Sunni Islam or Shia Islamism. Imamism. Oops, sorry. For the Seljuk arrival in the late 900s, there are also game rule to make their entrance more random or to turn it off entirely. Last but not least, the chaotic setup of 867 is now further improved by an early event chain about the Sanji Rebellion, which should add even more uncertainty and dynamism to an already quite open starting position. Huh interesting i mean i did notice the abbasids breaking apart much more often in crusader kings 3 than they do in crusader kings 2 this might all be related to that viziers a new type of diarchy coming in legacy of persia viziers are were historically many things they were powerful private landholders vital linchpins of the civil service some of the most corrupt people in the world and extravagantly dramatic party hosts <laughs> okay Mechanically, viziers may be appointed by duke tier or higher clan government characters. Whilst incumbent, they grant you extra tax jurisdiction, scale to their stewardship, tax jurisdiction they talked about in the last dev diary, and add a portion of their own tax collector aptitude directly to all of your tax collector's aptitudes, providing a powerful direct modifier on how much gold you get per month. How large a portion of aptitude they grant scales with how heavily the scales of power are swung towards them. So more empowered vizier offers both benefits and drawbacks to their liege. So they're almost like a like a constant regent, basically. Someone you don't just have when you are when there's a regency going on. Interesting. Unlike regents, being a vizier isn't a prestigious position for a noble. You are, after all, merely a civil servant and, what's worse, we want with actual work you're expected to do. I like that. Instead, landless courtiers and minor barons from your face, dominated gender, compete for the post. Having the vizier in your pocket is still desirable, though. So pro uh, prospective viziers at court will pot like politic behind the scenes, gaining friendships and rivals with other prospective candidates, their liege spouses and their liege stay-at-home adult children. These relations in turn directly contribute to vizier succession score, so a candidate who's friend with the current vizier will see themselves climb in the ranking, whereas one who's made an enemy of their legion spouse will see their score fall. 
For the same reason, prospective viziers will often le learn their leisure's language, seeking to further prospects and promotion. As civil servants, viziers don't have access to quite as many powers as regents. Predominantly, they'll embezzle and try to give negative county modifiers to vassals in exchange for gold. Though a complacent liege who lets the scales creep too far towards his supposedly loyal vizier will find that they are still capable of launching coups. Alright, viziers are also usable in the new-ish confident council position, which allows you to substitute them instead of your spouse or uh, for spousal consultas. What? Is this an instead of the spouse position or is this like I know there's a there's a fame trait that you can get which is um having a confidant to reduce stress but this sounds like it's an entire court position all right that's that's kind of interesting that could be interesting those such functionaries can be fired at any time removing the visa rate Regardless of the status of the scales of power, a vizier with a high swing is one who's enmeshed themselves. What? Though, such functions can be fired, removing the vizier rate, and who cannot be removed completely without consequence. Above a certain scale swing th threshold, firing a vizier will give you a severe negative economic modifier that harms your monthly income. This scales to how much swing the vizier had. So sure... You can fire them at 80 plus swing if you like, but don't think they won't have arranged a little job security for just this occasion. Okay. Civil service and chaos. I mean, it makes sense, right? If if they get in there and really like dig in their nails and, and make sure that you are in trouble <laughs> if they leave, like only they know how to do any of the bookkeeping properly. Sounds good to me. Sounds RP to me. I like RP stuff. An easier way to remove civil servants is to kick them upstairs, giving a vizier a county or, if the scales are really swung in their favor, a duchy. We'll also end the vizier rate, this time without an economic fallout. Everyone loves the promotion after all. All right, I like that. Finally, you may recall that I mentioned viziers were legendarily corrupt. Though not always strictly true, this was generally the case and actually a feature of the position rather than a bug. The role of a corrupt vizier was to run the realm's finances and was generally understood they, that they'd enriched themselves in the process. It was fairly common for viziers to pay significant bribes straight to the liege to get the position, that and to capture and audit the last vizier for undeclared revenue. <laughs> the advantage to this for the liege was that when they needed money in a pinch rather than have to collect a special tax from the realm as a whole, force powerful vassals and governors to cough up more cash or individually audit every petty tax collector, there was one person in the realm that they could generally guarantee not only had money, but had more money than they should have. I like this. This is very funny. Minimal overhead, maximum convenience, at least for the liege. Man, whoever wrote this one, they deserve a raise. I like this. This is, this is chock full of tiny little humor bites and bits. And uh, not too on the nose. Notable pro uh, notable properties. This character solely owns a particularly profitable toll road leading into Cairo. How they came to possess it and when the toll was established is a matter of much speculation. <laughs> In game, we, re we represent this through your vizier's income and extravagance modifiers. They receive an income from person uh, position what positional corruption proportional to your own income. This doesn't count towards the embezzlement secret, as it's technically part of the official remuneration. <laughs> well, it's basically a wage, but no one's calling that, because that would make it uncool. It's like, you know, an old married couple pretending to be different people and cheating on each other, but in reality it's just them. Every so often, they'll spend this money on character modifiers for treasure, activities, properties, or charity. Once they have one modifier of each uh, type, they begin again, spending more money on more expensive extra types of each modifier, up to four tiers. Legions can then... Mulked? What the heck is mulked? 
mulked. That is actually a word. Extra money from someone by fine or taxation. How is that pronounced? Okay, I, I didn't hear anything. Oh, it's muted. Can I unmute the stub? Uh, unmute site. Mulked. Mulked. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning so many English words here from Crusader Kings, honestly. Legions can then mulk the viziers via interaction, finding them for their excesses. This deletes the rank of the vizier's extravagance modifiers, liquidating them and transferring gold to the ruler that increases with their tier and number of modifiers liquidated. Naturally, viziers aren't generally too happy with this, even if the process further enmeshes them as the most important state official, but there's not much they can do about it other than rebuild their losses, which naturally makes them more attractive to mulked again down the line. <laughs> it's Marked Vizier. <laughs> We've included about 160 modif different modifier descriptions for what Viziers are spending their money on. Okay, that's a lot. Of which about half are explicitly historically attested. Comments in the script file for anyone particularly interested in which. Are you kidding me? They put historically accurate sources in the comments of their script files, if you really want to know. Man, that's the kind of stuff that makes a good team, a good dev team. That's crazy. Um, and another quarter, uh, quarter reasonably probable. The remaining quarter is us trying to keep up with the lavish standards for extravagances set by historical uh, history's actual viserates. These do vary vizier by vizier, so you should see your viziers purchasing, purchasing extravagance modifiers relevant to their traits and interests. Cool. Cool. That sounds interesting and fun. I like that. I mean, for a, for a flavor pack, that's, that's some decent amount of functionality that's upcoming here. I'm impressed. I am impressed.